So I created a routine that includes all aspects of learning a language, which I believe you need in order to reach beginner conversational level after studying for three months. Now the most important thing here is of course time. This is going to take you a lot of time. This is only to get you to a beginner conversational level. But if you really want to get a better understanding of this language, of course you're going to need more than three months, maybe even a year at least in my opinion. So first of all, a book, a resource that you can start learning from. Um, I think books are actually good because they teach a range of topics which means different contexts and that is exactly what you need because in real life you're also doing all kinds of things. One day you're going to the supermarket and then you're going to school so you need all these vocabulary and grammar related to these contexts. But what I do think is important is that you don't drill any uh, grammar or vocabulary from the start. You just read them, you remember some vocabulary and just don't try to drill them in your head if it's if it gets a little difficult or not. I want you to just focus on the basics for now. Now there are some things that I do think are important to remember. For example, basic phrases like hello, how are you doing, how do I do this, how do I do that. So like question words, numbers, uh, days of the week, these basic things I think are really important because you're going to need these when you are speaking with a native speaker because uh, most certainly they are going to ask you a question like why are you learning this language or how are you learning this language so you really need these question words and these basic information maybe tell something about yourself as well but the main focus on this learning actively learning is to plant the seed so what i mean by that is when you read through this these chapters let's say you're you're reading chapter one you learn a few things but you don't really understand them you're just planting a seed inside your brain so that in the future when you um, are more used to this language and you hear certain things again that you learned before the the seed is already in your brain so your brain will start making connections and it'll be way easier to remember the things that you learn i'll give you a simple example uh, yesterday i was in uh, in the supermarket i was doing my part-time job and i met a guy a spanish guy and i told him that i am learning spanish as well so and then i asked him I mean, how do you say this in spanish again como se dice eggs in spanish and he was like uh, huevos and I was like, oh yeah, of course, I totally forgot that. But now I'm never going to forget that because I learned it already at some point, but I just forgot it because I wasn't using it. But I had planted the seed before in my head. So now that he told me about it, it just instantly clicked and I'll definitely won't forget it now. So the second stage of this is actually the immersion. And this is important because now uh, when you're exposing yourself to the language and you are hearing native material, you might pick up some things and then the seeds that you previously planted inside your brain when you were learning these things will actually link to, uh, to each other because your brain needs repetition in order to remember oh I've learned that before now there are different kind of materials that you can use for example books people like to use books like novels for example you know Harry Potter is translated in so many languages let's take Harry Potter for example it's a very specific topic it's all about wizardry and which means that all the words in the book are has they have something to do with these uh, topics like magic i don't know if it's really relevant to learn all these vocabulary however it is good that um, you get used to the grammar and the speaking when people speak because this is very natural of course there's another kind of book that really helps with this which is graded readers and graded readers are basically books but they are aimed for people who are learning a language for example i'm using chinese graded readers and japanese graded readers and they really focus on the level that I'm currently at, which means that I can read a lot and actually understand quite a lot. And the things that I don't understand, I can make up what it means just by reading the rest of it. So there's actually a high level of comprehension, which makes it really fun for me to read and really valuable for me to read. So I highly recommend that you take a look at graded readers. Now, the other thing is, of course, videos like YouTube videos, for example, or even music. For YouTube videos, you can watch vlogs, for example. I'm learning Cantonese now for a week, <laughs> for only a week. And I actually found a channel, a vlog channel, that I like to watch every now and then, just to get my brain used to the sounds and, yeah, well, the sound of Cantonese. Also, you can use YouTube to find videos of certain things that you like. I like breakdance. I train every now and then, and I found a channel on YouTube. Japanese channel which is basically a dancing crew and they make videos about breakdance I really like watching the videos so I learn things by watching them and I like the video because it's about a topic that I like I really encourage you to find something that you like and then try to combine it with your language one more example is um, music so I, I bought a guitar an electric guitar I'm trying to learn how to play the guitar which is 
really difficult. But the thing is that I like Chinese songs. So what I do is I will just look up any Chinese song that I like and then I'll just find a guitar version and try to learn it, how, learn how to play it on the guitar. Now the last stage of this is the speaking part of course. And this is obviously the most important, at least if you're trying to be conversational and actually are learning this language because you want to speak with other people. In which case you have to find native speakers and you can find these anywhere. I believe you really have to start speaking from the start because of course it's important that the, the more you practice the easier it gets but also you are training a different skill listening listening to people in real speed because your brain is so used to taking the time to understand something when you're reading or when you're just learning from a textbook but when you're speaking to someone else there's there's not as much time to respond so you really have to train your brain to understand what is being said and then also train your well your mouth and your tongue to produce these sounds in order to uh, sound like a native as well now speaking might be a little scary especially if you're not really good in the language yet but i know this might sound weird but you just have to put your ego aside don't think and just speak when you find a native speaker in your area you should just walk up to them find a way to strike a conversation and just practice practice the things that you learned and especially these things that i told you about in the first segment the learning part where you learned the basic conversational stuff and how to introduce yourself with these things that you learned all these question words and these sentences you can now actually use them on the native speaker and see how they respond yeah it's scary to speak and you do get nervous but you know what you're most probably not going to meet this person anyway again so you can just talk to them and usually they are actually pretty happy when you speak to them in, the, in their language especially Especially if it's a language that is not that common. Last week I went to my local library and I saw the cleaning lady. I don't know the uh, the right word for that. I saw that she was she was probably somewhere from East Asia. I walked up to her and we started talking and then I asked her, "Hey, I I I hear an accent. Where are you from?" It's like South Asia somewhere and she told me, "Yeah, I'm from Thailand." And the only thing I knew is how to say hello, "Sawadee krab," something like that. And she was like, "Oh, Oh, how do you know? Have you been to Thailand? You know what? It would have been so cool if I could have told her, no, I haven't been to Thailand, but I like to study Thai and I think it's an interesting language. There's this quote that I found and it really resonates with this topic and it's it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have one and not be prepared. If you meet a native that speaks the language that you're learning, and you are not prepared to speak to them and it's a really rare opportunity. You are going to feel so bad that you didn't know how to say it because it doesn't happen so often. So be prepared and just learn. And when you see a native speaker, use that time to make the most out of that conversation and learn as much as possible. Now, if you're learning a language that uh, isn't that common and you are not going to find any native speakers or you live in a small town or whatever, you're watching this video. So you can just go to the internet and go to sites like HelloTalk in which you can speak with other people. On this app, you can send messages, chat with native speakers. Doing voice calls is maybe more efficient because you can actually speak. So I've been using Twitter and I I actually found a guy who who is Chinese and who wants to practice English so every now and then we do a voice call and it's actually pretty nice to get to know other people I get to speak some Chinese too now I'm actually trying to use discord as well because there are so many discord servers in all different places so I will actually be making some videos where I speak other languages using discord so if you do agree with what I'm saying and you like this and you're learning Japanese then please hit the e na button however if you're learning Chinese and you're enjoying this name please hit the Xihuan button and if you're not learning any languages then I don't know what you're doing I don't know why not and you should start now because the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the second best time is now so start now with this method I really try to use every aspect of learning a language and it's important that you uh, learn how to speak you learn the grammar you expose yourself you listen and you write with others so that you are really experienced and spending time in every aspect of learning the language don't try to skip any of these uh, aspects also time is super important it will take you a lot of time so you have to be willing to spend that time as well if anyone is interested I might make a video where I actually show you my hours and how many hours I spend on each of these things because learning is not just learning there's vocabulary to learn there's grammar to learn this is an experience that i had a few days back mm. what do you know Nihongo de. Pot potato ah potato canton mm. go canton go lesson mm. eh kitsune san wa chugoku go mo shabereru no ah yeah yeah <laughs> chotto dake <laughs> demo eh benkyou shite mas ii ne chugoku go to 英語ができればもう世界中で話せるね。